Now, um, new administration in the United States, Robert. Um, an- another Robert, uh, Bobby Kennedy. More famous. Uh, than yeah. 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 Um, Good, good, um, good to have plenty of Roberts around. It's excellent, but but he is going to make a lot of data, which is currently not available public. Why hmm. is this, or is this important for improving the quality of research and the audits and the analysis that could take place in the states? What well, what's the research opportunities here from what we've got at the moment? I think that the uh, appointment of uh, Bobby Kennedy as the uh, Secretary of Health in in the United States um, was a massively important uh, thing, my my personal view. Uh, Me too, me too, 100%. We had a a Bobby Kennedy uh, election night when uh, when the president's election, the whole crowd of us got together uh, for Bobby. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And um, what I think... He he gets a lot of bad press for reasons which have nothing to do with who he is and what he wants to do. I what he so. says consistently is that he will look at evidence-based outcomes. Yep. And that means having a transparency of yep. the databases and an analysis of it to make decisions. Now, yep. that is not what has been happening. No. Uh, any aspect you look at of um, the whole COVID era, the whole five years of it, um, is has been distorted by selective cherry picking, by uh, not releasing data that's necessary, by manufacturing outcomes, and so we get a very distorted picture of every aspect of COVID. So the selected release of data as well. Exactly. And so what is needed, and it's starting to sort of happen uh, very slowly and vary in part. But what is needed is to have all the data to make sure the data is uh, properly, um, not just analysed, but properly um, presented, uh, mm. that, uh, th- that you get um, transparency, yeah. all the data there, all the data analysed, and then decisions made on the basis of that analysis. That's all uh, many of us, including you and m- myself, yeah. John, have been saying for years that we want proper analysis. We want yeah. red flags to disappear. And um, I, I'm hoping that that will be a, an outcome, a logical outcome based on evidence, based on science, uh, not just in, um, not just, uh, in uh, COVID, but in the health area. I mean, looking, I, I, I was just reading, I mentioned the longevity in the States, but mm. When I, it wasn't just the longevity this particular article was talking about. It was talking about the incidence of autism, things like that. Yeah. When, when it, I was, it's an, an epidemic. Autism, autism hardly existed. No. Um, now, every class has got a kid with autism in it. At least uh, one. Yeah. Uh, my daughter is, uh, is really an Australian expert on, on autism yes. as a sports pathologist. Um, and she's worked with this. Uh, for many years, and um, you know, she just throws her hands up in horror by the numbers of people and um, the fact that it's a growing problem. But and the but only way, we're, yeah, the only way we're going to know what causes no, this, yeah, sorry. So I was going to say the only way we know what causes this is we have if we have the transparency hmm. that to give the data that can be analysed to give us the evidence-based principles, and hmm. then we can make the decisions to operationalize the, the eradication. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know the of, answers of the to all these questions. I, I, I think I know some of the questions, but I don't know their answers. Yeah. And, and what I think we need is translate the questions into answers. And, and this, of course, can be done. What do we mean by power in research? <laughs> Unfortunately, it, uh, it's a, an Aboriginal word for um, uh, big pharma. But... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I quote my great uh, comedian Barry Humphreys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, but I mean, when we talk about the power of a study, what 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 do we mean in, in, in medical it's research? Trying to do a, the, the ideal study to do uh, to work out if, say, uh, drug X is going to be effective is mm-hmm. what's known as a randomised controlled trial. Mm-hmm. That's where you reduce the bias that are inherent in any other type of study 
which you can't get rid of. Any other study is going to have certain biases. Um, and, and so ideally, you have what's called a randomized controlled trial, where you, um, you have a random process of half going into the placebo group, uh, which is the, the sugar water, and half going into the test group. And there are many other parameters around this to make sure that you have this balanced. But it, power means that if you're going to do this and you're trying to work out whether, say, ivermectin is going to be effective, you don't take a, a total group of 10, uh, five going into the placebo and five going into the test, because you won't, that won't be powerful enough to get statistical significance pretty much yeah. what outcome you get. And so you have to have a study big enough to put into play all the variables, the likely responsiveness. And so you, uh, I end up having a study which is powered to give you, if you have a certain number of people uh, expecting a certain percentage, you're aiming at saying, look, I'm expecting a 30% um, preferential outcome for this drug for this particular disease. And to get a 30% outcome, I need to power it by having 200 people or 300 right. people uh, involved. So the power depends very much on the expected benefit, uh, what you want to see. Now, th th there's a lot of ups and downs of all this. And of course, the randomized control trial has been totally manipulated by the, the big companies who managed to say, oh, we've done a randomized controlled trial as though uh, God has given a tick and yep. it's going to be perfect. But like saying abracadabra, course, isn't it? Of course, they decide what outcome they want. Uh, <laughs> so if you look at the COVID study, there's only been, <clears throat> the only randomized controlled trials have been done, have taken out the people who may get very sick and get a serious outcome. They, they designed those trials to get registration status by simply looking at less infections. Well, we now know from the discussion we had earlier today, um, this evening, um, that uh, um, the uh, disease, the, the whole pandemic, is essentially a relatively mild to moderate one for most people. <clears throat> and that was how the studies were done. So we ended up getting the registration files studies done on people with very mild disease. So, of course, you can... There's no randomized controlled trial showing that uh, vaccines prevent serious disease. They're all what's called um, object, uh, um, they're all non-randomized trials. Uh, they're yeah. good trials, some of them, but they've got so many areas of uh, bias in them that you, you, you can't get a quantitative outcome from any of them. I'll, I'll, give, you an, I'll yeah, give you an example. Yeah, yeah. Give you an example. Um, there's been a number of studies showing that if you have an active flu vaccine, that that flu vaccine uh, significantly reduces your chance of getting serious uh, infection from COVID for a short period of time. Um, now, a study done on Australians, which has been used to promote vaccines, uh, was done back in 2022, um, said, look, this is fantastic, but when you look at the small... At, print in the addendum that's given, uh, you find that 17% of the uh, placebo group, the non-vaccinated group, uh, had actually had a flu vaccine, whereas something like 85% of the uh, group that had the COVID vaccine had also had the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a behavioural issue of people who, pr presumably a behavioural issue, uh, who will select whether or not they have vaccination. Mm. So I'm just giving that as one example yeah. that would not be, should be avoided in a randomised controlled trial. You'd say, oh, we know flu vaccine can have an impact. So therefore, we will make sure that we have equal numbers going into that randomised controlled trial of uh, unvaccinated and vaccinated having equal numbers of flu vaccines. But if Robert Kennedy was able to, and he is able to do this, I know, anonymise data and release it, from, oh, I don't know, say 100 million people that were vaccinated and 100 million people that weren't vaccinated. Um, would those kind of numbers give us a fairly powerful study, potentially? Oh, yeah, oh, but, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's yeah, it's just, just like around. huge, isn't it? It's just not a randomised controlled trial, it's a retrospective no, no. of data, all of that. Yes, of course, you're going to get a lot of information because yeah. 
in most of those cases, you're going to have a lot of evidence. You need yes. to be age stratified because obviously over the age of 70 or over the age of 80 um, is going to be very different outcome to someone in um, 20s and 30s. Um, with, that, with those kind of numbers, we could end up with a p-value of p equals 0. 0.00000... Well, that's, that's hundreds like, of zeros before the one. Yes. <laughs> Potentially, because you know the, the, the two main factors are, are, are the, the the magnitude of the difference, say between vaccinated and unvaccinated, and the number involved. That's that's true. That's and, true. And that's what gives us the the, the lower p value. So when we've got such high numbers, we'll have p values that are well, basically I, infinite, thing, infinitely small. The important thing is with any of these vaccines, it, it's all about uh, risk benefit analysis. Yeah. Um, you can, I mean, there's no question that uh, the COVID vaccines, when they were introduced in 2021 and early 22, depending on the experience of COVID in the particular population, um, you, you got very effective um, uh, prevention of serious disease, over 80%. Um, and yet the trials were actually done initially to prevent, the, the trials were actually done to collect data on transmission. That's how they were sold to us. <laughs> That's right. And, and then and they said, oh, always preventing yeah. severe disease. Imagine I that. I cannot believe that the uh, Moderna and Pfizer did not know. In fact, they admitted they, they didn't want to look at it because they knew they weren't going to prevent transmission because yeah. you're injecting into a compartment that's got basically nothing to do with the compartment that gets infected. Uh, you know, it's a bit like um, um, saying that uh, here we've got two classes in a school um, one's teaching Latin, one's teaching science. Um, yeah. You're not going to expect the uh, uh, the science students uh, to be able to translate uh, um, Caesar. Yeah. And of course, we're talking about the mucosal compartment in the lungs and the systemic yeah. compartment. And I think we've done videos on that before, Robert. So yeah. people, can, people, can, people can check on that. Yeah. But um, so really quite an exciting time in terms of the, the amount of transparency that, that we could have in the past we've been given i learned a new phrase uh, recently it's called limited hangout have you heard of that limited, hang L limited hangout and there's no reason why should i, I only learned it last week no, 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 so, so like what what happened in the covid inquiry that the, the um the, the the national covid inquiry in the uk they had a few people on with vaccine injury now i don't think they were very well treated in the inquiry but it gave the impression that oh we're all out in the open now. Oh, but in yeah. actual fact, I don't think they were. Yeah. And, and this is called limited hangout, apparently. So, so far, we've had limited hangout. <laughs> we, we have to keep up with the latest phraseology. Um, but, but, that, but, but with these massive numbers and the complete transparency, that can completely change. Yeah. And, and, and the potential for new knowledge here in my view, is immense because I think what's happened with a lot of interventions, and I would include vaccine in this, that we've started off with one brick here, which makes perfect sense. Then we'll put another one on top, which still makes perfect sense. But then another one's come along and it's a bit to the side. And then another one's a bit to the side till eventually the whole pile falls over. It's called a topsy curve. You just keep adding things and you're getting further and further away from your foundations. <laughs> And new vaccines have come along and they've kind of been added on to the schedules without uh, a real evidence-based adjudication against placebo, for example. Um, so I think, I think because th this is, because a lot of these types of treatments have evolved almost organically, but fueled by uh, vested interest, arguably, We've actually got away from the fundamental principles, and I think I think we really need at least at least very thorough audits on on what we're doing now. Well, well I, I think this is that's a very very interesting comment and example, and it's exactly what's happened with vaccines and COVID. Can, can mm. I just please develop this a little bit because please. It's something that I became. Well, it's, it's not surprising. In fact, it's totally predictable uh, what has happened. 